only goes out to the people who actually commented in the question box. Remember what I said earlier about the goods only go to the people who comment in the question box. That's why I spent so much time up front making sure you found it, and then also because I do customize everything. I will answer questions during this time, so do keep it highly interactive, but if the question is lengthy or very personal, I'll save it to the end. I will turn off the recording then to preserve your privacy, and that is only for the benefit of the people here in the room anyway to go through the Q&A. Make sense to everybody? Perfect. Thank you, Crystal. I appreciate it so much. It makes me feel so much better because I like to know that I'm not just speaking out into space. So today we're going to talk about what is accessibility. You know, what is this really? I'm going to move some things out of the way so I can just accessibly see my slides. Here we go. Some things popped up in my way. So what is it? How can we design for that? So designing meaning our website, what we do, even the posts that we create that we want people to read, to consume. Our email, is it accessible? Can people read what we're looking at? Can they really consume the information that we have? Of course, physical accessibility. When we talk about a physical accessibility, some people think about it's just this, but it isn't. And really about being inclusive. And that's why we started with the video, because we want to think about you know what it's like what is it if you didn't have your hearing and if you had limitations on your sight or your voice or the ability to use your hands or any part of your body what would it be like to traverse through the world you heard me talk about that a moment ago just going through the airport and of all places i was at the austin airport so i thought it would be easier and then we were actually going to the las vegas airport so i figured big airports they could do it and you have to go a mile so the gates over here and you have to go mile down this way because it's really long if you've been to the bergstrom airport you go down there you go down there and then you come all the way back to try to get to the actual gate it's it's an event and um, something to, to keep in mind, especially when there's you're going up and down and you're actually pushing somebody who's physically heavier than you, that makes it a big challenge. So think about that. Even as we boarded the plane, it was amazing to me that there were about 20 people that could board before us because they didn't have anybody that could assist somebody who's hearing impaired. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but it's important for us to really get that mindset and take ourselves out of our own shoes and literally walk or sit in someone else's shoes when we talk about accessibility. So it is the ability to realize that there are challenges every day with people who have disabilities. And some of these disabilities, they're not visible, right? You know, somebody looks perfectly fine. My husband looks like he's a perfectly healthy person that he can walk around, but he cannot do ramps and such after his surgery. So that just took time. So we don't know what the barriers they're actually encountering. It's important for us to give a little bit of grace of that and understand that accessibilities ensure that people with disability are not perceived or seen different or given every opportunity to have the access that we all do. Those of us who are sighted or those who have have no mobility challenges. So what we know is that there are many people, hundreds and thousands and millions of people, trillions of spending power as well, that have accessibility issues. So we as small businesses also need to be cognizant of this because again, it is not just physical disabilities. We also see this happening when we're working remotely or when we're connecting with people remotely. So today we're gonna to be talking about building that accessibility and really looking at universal design. So when I say universal design, it is something that is easily accessible everywhere because it might not just be somebody with a disability that you can't see. It could be somebody who um, is maybe even from another country accessing your information. You say you can do business worldwide, but are you ready to do business worldwide? So does it allow people to engage without any barriers? This really gives you an opportunity now to really be helpful. That's one of the reasons why we as the Google team decided to go ahead and bring in actual people, live closed caption, because if you've ever seen computer generated closed caption, right? I've seen it a lot. It'll make you laugh. You can just bust out and have a good old time what it actually translates what you say. And I consider that I'm very good at enunciating. I mean, I speak in front of a room of thousands when I'm physically there. I speak in front of them and they hear me and they understand me, but yet still the translation, interesting, right? So again, that also lessens not just your company's risk, but also positions you as a caring company that does think about accessibility and giving everybody every opportunity to do business with you. We want to make it people easy for people to buy from us. Now, because I come from an e-commerce back, e-commerce background, 
I'm going to talk about the word buy a lot. Understand that if you're a nonprofit, buy means that they're going to volunteer. They're going to sign up to be a sponsor. They're going to share you with their friends. So you'll do a little friend raising as well as fundraising. That's what I mean by buy. If you're somebody positioning yourself as an expert in your field, buy could be that they leave their information to contact or they download the PDF or watch the video that you want. So that's what buy could also mean. It could also mean, let's say if you're branding as an employer and you're looking to employ people, that buy means that people are submitting their resume or their interest in a position or your company, okay? So as long as we know that's the, the basis of what I say buy, know that I'm not just talking about purchasing in dollars, right? Okay, so there is an exchange of something of value, expecting to get something of value. Make sense to everybody? All right, so as we look at design, we wanna look at image descriptions. You hear people talking about this a lot because they're thinking about the search engine, Google search, Google bot has to be able to also see you. So in Google, a lot of times we say that Google bot is just like another person. Google bot is having a customer or a user experience just like any other person. Are you making it easy for Google Bot to be able to buy from you, to see your information? This means alt text and descriptions. And I am guilty of this too, being lazy about alt text, just saying, okay, it's a coffee cup, you know? But I don't give any more context to that. So we'll talk about that. I've also been very cognizant about color contrast. I've worked with a lot of people remotely who are colorblind. And I realized that different shades of green and gray do not do really, really well. It also is taking a good hard look at your design techniques. Are you making it universally accessible from your text links to your formatting to even your video capturing and captions as you look at your YouTube channel, <clears throat> even TikTok, <clears throat> excuse me. TikTok has some amazing tools in there to help you with your captions. So are you being accessible? All right. So for you, I would like for you to find that question box. Remember what I told you about the importance of it because only people who have commented in the question box are gonna get a copy of today's recording and a copy of today's slides because a lot of times the slides are really, really, really good at outline to follow as you to do and as you, you're even sharing with other people who can help you take what you've learned and apply because knowledge is not powerful until it's applied. So today with the activity you're gonna answer in the question box, how would you describe this image in front of you? Let me know in the question box and I'll give you all, I'll actually sip my coffee cup while you actually write that in the question box. Other than it being grainy, what do you see? See, so, oh, wonderful. White porcelain traditional coffee cup with handle and saucer plate. Wonderful, thank you so much. Anybody else wanna play along? And let me know what you see here. A blue gradient background with a white saucer and coffee cup filled with coffee and spoon on saucer. Excellent, thank you. Anybody else? The big, oh, let me see. We've got um, coffee in a white cup with a matching saucer and spoon on the side. Perfect, okay, wonderful. See how we're all, now I'm gonna pull you a little bit further back in this as you're writing your descriptions for accessibility and think context. You know, a lot of times in marketing, we talk about content is king, but context is queen. And context, when we're talking about alt descriptions, alt text is truly important. So as we set the frame of context to make ourselves more accessible, we have to think here, is this a table? or is this a painting? And so we actually take that step backwards and start looking at this thing. There is a coffee in a beautiful painting. It is an oil painting with a blue gradient background depicting a coffee cup, a white porcelain coffee cup filled with black coffee and also a spoon set to the center with the handle to the left and the, ha the handle of the spoon to the left and the handle of the coffee cup to the right on a beautiful white saucer. I know that's a big description, but we want to give people that context. And truly that is where we have the biggest challenge because we drop right in here and we think it could be a table, it could be a painting, it could be a photo, we don't know. Give them context. So as you're putting your alt descriptions, this is something that I've had to challenge myself too. So you are not alone in this. All of us are challenging ourselves by taking that step backwards and looking at it in context. If somebody who is citing 
um, impaired or sight impaired and they can't see this and you're describing it to them, are you giving them the full breadth and width of what it is that you actually see, getting them as close to what a sighted person can see. Does that make sense? Okay, right? It's a big wow to just think about being able to think in that context. So as we look at our alt text and description, remember what I said, Google bot is just another person. So when we say everybody's looking at our site, Google bot is the same way. Without alt text, a screen reader will miss that content. Now, if you've never used a screen reader, I'm going to throw one up here because you know I'm all about practical application. But if you're in Google Chrome and you go to a the Chrome store, and I've got to make this bigger. So this is actually in the Chrome Web Store. You can add to Chrome a screen reader, but it is very, very invasive. Every time you go to a website, it will read it out to you. So it'll say, next paragraph. I'm not going to turn it on right now because I'm a little bit scared since internet's been a little bit glitchy. I don't want to do that to you, but I do want to show you that with the screen reader, it will read through everything and they'll say space, the weather, next line, channel. So it will tell you all of that. And is it telling them everything that truly gives a picture of your site? So take a good look at your website and start reading through it. In fact, this is what I ask people to do when they're making sure that anything that they're working on is accessible, is to install this. I disable it most of the time, but when I do want to do that review, install it and have it review your site and hear it and hear what somebody else is hearing and seeing for the first time, okay? So you see here also, the written description can also help with SEO. That's search engine optimization, which is how the actual search engine sees our site, which is very important, our sites or our posts or anything, because if the search engine can't see it, then it can't deliver you in the results. And everything that we're doing is to show up in the first page of Google search results, because that's the only place, that's the one and only place people look. They don't go to the second page. So this also helps sighted people too, because it gives them a bit of context. Maybe I am just, cruising through things and I'm looking at something and I don't know what I'm looking at or maybe I'm multitasking right I've got slack going on here trying to answer this email here and I see that pop up but now this gives me a little bit more if you think for example if you've ever been in a bar you know let's say it's the Texas Tech game right and everybody's hooping and hollering and they're excited about the touchdown and you're trying to watch another screen because you're kind of sort of in the game but you also are interested in what's happening in this other screen if closed captions aren't on you're looking at it going, I have no clue, and you're trying to figure it out and squint and read. But when they turn closed captions on, it doesn't help only the person who is hearing impaired. It also helps us who cannot hear because of the noise and the hollering. So if you think in that format, it really gives you a good frame of reference of what people might be also experiencing too, okay? <laughs> Cheryl, yes. Yep, a Red Raider. I'm a graduate of, of Texas Tech. So I'm a little bit biased, but I love all schools and all states so but i yeah i'm a texas tech right so i'm a red raider so when you think about your image descriptions one of the things you might not be aware of is with alt text it's really a short summary and a short description so a hundred characters remember a character is a letter a punctuation mark a space so all you have is a hundred and that's really kind of limited when you think about only characters not words, characters. So captions can be a little bit longer and those can give you a longer description. So I encourage you to use those too to be able to give that context that you want to do because I know it's too hard to give context here in alt text. A lot of times, 100 characters, man, that's even, be that's even shorter than a Twitter tweet on how to put that out. So keep that in mind for the complex data. You can start doing a little bit more and even put that lengthier description in there, okay? Now, Color contrast is also a thing. It's really important. So when you use text colors that stand out from the background colors, I mean, just take a look at this, you know, see how it can easily blend for people, especially if they don't see that color distinction. So we want it to stand out from the background. Think of that also. Sometimes you'll send emails and you'll highlight what's most important. Are you really making sure that stands out? Or so I've seen a lot of people get creative with coloring and so they color it, but because it's black text on the color that they put for somebody who is having some hearing or some sight issues and some impairments, they may not see that at all. So we're looking for high contrast to you and saturation and think of thick lines. I know there's a lot of really nice thin, thin lines out there that look beautiful in design, but it is, is it truly serving who we serve? 
Remember, we want to make it easier for people to buy from us. And then we want to use various patterns and don't assume that people know. So a lot of times whenever I'm sending an email, I won't only just use highlights, but I will also bold something so that it does stand out from the page because it's gotten a little bit darker. And then I will also even put dashes around it to really have something stand out if I don't want anyone to miss it. And perhaps they're they're reading it themselves with some sort of impairment or disability or perhaps a reader is reading it for them. All right, so you think of textures, look at patterns and think of that for your titles. Take a good look at your site and look at your titles because a lot of times we get really creative with our brand colors and we don't realize that some of that creativity might be putting some obstacles in people being able to see and consume our information. So if you look at this, for example, you see things in color and then now how you can see it in grayscale. So as you look at this, these different label elements, your dashed lines you're using here. So in the graph, you're not just trying to designate by color. Think of this for infographics. So I was working with a graphic team this morning, in fact, where I was taking an infographic that they created, which is beautiful, but so hard for somebody who is um, sight impaired. I said it really, and for anybody in a mobile, it's even really, really difficult. So if you're your graphic elements on your site are not mobile responsive and that means you have to pinch and zoom to read it or swipe side to side to be able to read it, then it needs to be redone as well. So I sent this back to them and I said, listen, this is not mobile responsive. We really need to think in this first before anything else. And then of course your colors, you know, are you trying to designate it a little bit differently just by color? So you might want to choose here the line type and even the size, that line thickness to be able to make it easy for somebody to access. So as you use different formatting tools, tools, as you look at different documents, you'll see that Google Docs, which works like Microsoft Word, so within your free Gmail or free Google account, you have access to Google Docs, which works like Word, Google Sheets, which works like Excel, and Google Slides, which works like PowerPoint. Those are 100% free in a free account, so you don't have to worry about any licensing or paying for that. But you'll see when you bring up a Google Doc, it's already laid out in that way to make it easy for you to write or somebody who is having some sight impairment easy for them to consume and for them as right to write as well. So you can see that with assisted technology, this really helps people interpret that content better. So for example, too, when you do text related links, and I have made this shift, I've been very guilty of this saying, use this link for free training. Instead of saying this link, now I'm gonna give more context to it. What you're doing is you're not just going to a link, you're going to the Grow with Google homepage. And that's where you're going to get free training tools and resources. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Hopefully so, but let me know if you have any questions in the question box, okay? So when we look at video captions and transcripts, we have to really figure out what works best for us. For example, it could be automatic captioning. There's lots of tools that do that. It could be automatic transcripts that you download and then you upload to have those put in as subtitles. You could be creating your own. Maybe you use Rev or some other transcription tool like Subly and you create your own and you add that as a subtitle. Okay, so those are different vendors that could actually help support you in creating those. And I've used lots of different vendors. Know that on YouTube, you can look at the auto translate settings right here and you can have closed captioning on. So you can click on the CC, which we saw in the video that we saw at the beginning, the top of this actual presentation or the session. And then you can also set auto translate so they can put it in the language that is most com they're most comfortable with. You can do that already with YouTube. With Vimeo, that's also available there too. If you have a Vimeo account and that's what you prefer to do for video, you can see here that you can also put auto captioning in with Vimeo. So you see a lot of tools actually now being more aware and providing more accessibility. The thing that you need to really be um, cognizant of, and let me see, I'm gonna take this off here, I'm gonna show you this. Um, let me bring that live. So when you're in your free Gmail account or free Google account, let me show you what this looks like in a free Google account. It's what's known as the app keypad. Ooh, that's little broadcasting. So let me make that bigger. See that app keypad? It's the same in your Gmail account you saw. If you will click here and you go to Drive, when you're in Google Drive, you're gonna click New here and you'll say Google Docs. And let's say you want a blank document. And I encourage you to do this. Make sure that's big enough. But you can go here and say, edit where, oops, let me take this off here because I cannot see it real quick. Let me try to find this before because um, my camera's in the way. <laughs> I'm having visual um, accessibility issues because my camera's in the way. Uh, 
yep, you can go here. You can actually use the tool of, here we go, it's right there. Bring this back out to you again so you can see it. So you know where I found it, go to tools. So when you're in a Google Doc, go to tools, go to voice typing. And now you can turn voice typing on and you can find out exactly what an auto caption will get for you. So if you're using those tools that I showed you in Vimeo or in YouTube and you don't know and you don't want to just be surprised because you might need to work in your enunciation of things or maybe even in slowing down your speech because you don't have the amazing crystal here to capture everything that you're doing. So if that is the case, find out here really click here to speak and see what happens. It's pretty amazing where you think you may be clear, but you're not being clear. And that will help you as you use the automatic captioning tools here. So you can use that for free within Google and give that a test. You can also in TEDx, if that's your preference for your video, you can find that you could do that there quickly. And there's also that auto captioning, again, testing that out on you know, what is it that people are actually hearing. And then of course, you heard me mention that earlier on TikTok, you can do that too. TikTok automatically does that and you can turn that on or off. So a lot of creators are now learning that they do need to turn that on, okay? I don't know if you are aware of all these tools. Let me know if you are aware. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions there. You can also get those auto transcripts in YouTube. So if you upload videos to YouTube, a lot of times we'll do this, especially if we're on the ground, you know, we're in person, let's say in an expo event and we're manning a Google booth because I just recently did that in Indianapolis. So I'm manning a Google booth and we've got a video playing. Well, you know, it's an expo, people are talking. So it doesn't just help people who are um, impaired. It also helps people who have their full capabilities or abilities. What I did is I opened the transcript and I made sure that that was available and showing here here in the booth and then I just turned off the volume because there was no need for us to all to try to compete as they're asking questions of us and we're walking them through things on a computer but they could still see it. people passing by the booth whether or not they had any impairments or not could see it instantly yes actually see all of, and these are all available to you free well through YouTube is free and through um, TikTok is free and of course all the Google tools that I just showed you Google Docs um, and how you could use that typing the the screen um, reader so you can hear exactly what does your site sound like to somebody who is listening and having a screen reader actually look at the site all of those are a hundred percent free um, with Vimeo I think it's free with a basic account um, but I'm not sure with TEDx. I'm not familiar with that platform, okay? Also, it's a good for us to remember that with PDFs too. PDFs are hard for somebody who has any impairments to actually consume because it flattens everything. That's why it's called PDF. That stands for Portable Document Format. It's meant to be able to travel across all different tools and not lose the integrity of the look of the actual document. But if you are somebody who is sighted impaired, then this could be a real challenge for you because you cannot, your reader can't pick up any of this. It sees it as an image only, so it's a flat image. So keep that in mind. I know that's quite different than what I teach in the resume writing um, webinar that I do. So in that session, I talk about sending your resume by PDF. Again, it is something you know different if you're giving your PDF out to somebody who is um, at a resume, you might even want to give it in both formats, right? Just to make sure you've covered anybody, no matter what their ability is, that they can consume the information. Now, when we're looking at email, this is also something, yeah, Vivian, I know this, there is so much available here and that a lot of people don't slow down and think about, and you're actually putting yourself head and shoulders above your competitors because you're thinking about this now. It's very much top of mind and people are trying to figure out their way, their way around it. So as I finish up the session today, I'm going to give you a slide that you might want to take a screenshot of right away. If you want to do a little bit of investigating your, on your own on all the resources available to you. But but do know that you will get the slides and a copy of today's recording in 24 hours. It takes that long for the system to render. So don't think I forgot you, you'll get it in 24 hours from now. So remember to be really mindful, is it in logical order? So I have a tendency to speak like a wet Texan, which means I just drop you right into the conversation and then I back up and give you a little bit of context. So it's something that I'm actively working on. Think about too, your layout too, as you do in email. So a lot of times in email, I don't even say, hey, how are you? I just start right away responding to what you ask me. So use one column layout because it's really difficult for readers or anybody who is sight impaired to actually see that. Maybe 
make sure that you've got good links, hyperlinks in there. And emojis, while they're great in email marketing, can also be distracting or hard for any screen reader to read exactly what that is. And can you imagine the amount of text and, and spoken text that it takes to describe what a winky emoji looks like? So remember, think about the text to image ratio when you look at your website. Is it a good 60-40 text in 60 in text, 40 in images? So you're giving your eyes the breathability and the ability to consume the information. So this is just good marketing and search engine optimization best practices here. Avoid anything where you're just using a lot of links because on a four and a half inch screen, just even for those of us who are very, very well, um, you know, able to, to move around, have great mobility, if we have big fat fingers and we're trying to click on something, it's very frustrating when those text links are so close together. Look at that font size to, font size to be at least 14 point. And the next step is to use font that somebody, that everybody else will have on their computer too, because it's really, really hard to see th some things when it's changed to adjust to the font that's available on that device too. So it's just a user experience. We want to make it easy for people to buy from us. Look at that contrast. Again, physical, physical, ugh, visual cues. Whew, I'm sorry about that. I was trying to say because I saw the next slide coming up, which is about physical accessibility. And of course, closed caption too, because that just is a free tool available to all of us. Now, when we look at physical accessibility, if we have a place where people are actually seeing and coming, remember to remove those physical spaces. It's very, very frustrating, I'll tell you, in navigating the airport. And I was navigating the Las Vegas airport because there's all those kiosks. You know, they want you to just, man, whether you want or lost, we want you to spend your money here or you're just getting excited and you want a little bit of bling before you walk into Vegas on the strip. So there's all these kiosks here, but when you're wheeling somebody in a wheelchair, all those kiosks make it like the worst obstacle course in the world with people moving around there too. So think about that with your physical space. Can you get around it with a wheelchair? When my son broke his leg, and I mean, he broke it so bad that we had to be in, hosp in the hospital and surgery, that when we brought him out, I realized that it doesn't matter even if the, the curb is friendly, wheelchair friendly, I have a Suburban with a step up, but there's still this much of a gap between the step up and here. And for somebody who doesn't have mobility, that's a challenge. And for somebody who has to lift that somebody, that's also a challenge. It is funny and embarrassing and sad all at the same time. So confirm all of your access or understand the ADA, the American with Diabilities Act regulations and their actual best practices too. Think about welcoming service animals because I was, before I, I did any of this, I actually worked a lot with diabetes and diabetes research. And so I lot, saw a lot of people who didn't realize that people were going through um, the ability of not being able to see with their eyes because of their diabetes. And they didn't understand the service animals too. Animals too. And then of course, let people know that you are easily accessible. All of this goes back to just being inclusive because when we think about that, our universal design brings in Google Bot as a user. Everything that we're doing brings people in where they feel comfortable and we're not making any of those assumptions. So here's the key. Speak normally to somebody too. You know, uh, it, it's, it was and, and still is, makes me sad. The hardest thing when I fly with my father um, because he's, he's, I mean, he's a gifted cardiac cardiologist and cardiac cath surgeon. So he used to help people, you know, wounded in battle. He could do surgery. He's a flight surgeon in the plane. He knows his stuff to see people speak to him because, because of all the exposure of the different chemicals he was exposed to, he has lost his hearing to speak to him as if he is an idiot. He is not. So remember that, that they still are a person. And if you think of them as a person first before the disability, so this isn't somebody who is hearing impaired. This is a person with a hearing impairment. This is a person with a sight impairment. This is a person with a mobility issue or mobility challenges. And if we think of that, we will speak normally to them and we will respect their personal space that just because they have a wheelchair doesn't mean that you can hang on or put your purse on the handle of their wheelchair. All of that is a part of their personal space, okay? So I know it seems like this should be obvious, but I see a lot of people who don't practice it, even though they may know this. Remember what I said, knowledge is not powerful until it is applied.
So this is a screen I was telling you about where you can see all of the different uh, accessibility information that you can actually study. And when you get a copy of today's slides, you'll be able to click on these. But if you want to take a screenshot, I'll get my pointer out of the way there. You can take a screenshot of this and do some research on your own to find out more by just Googling this, of course. Web AIM, just so that you know, that will actually walk you through whether or not your website and all your digital properties, so it's webaim.org, will actually walk you through whether or not you are accessible there and then give you some best practices and even more tools than what I've shared with you here today. I just wanted to make sure you had the free tools accessible to you, okay? And we've covered quite a bit today. Now, like I end every um, webinar, I always end each session with resources, this being the prime resource compared to, uh, really with what we're talking about today. But there's also resources if you yourself want to become more aware, uh, more educated on this, you can go here to Certificates for Business. These are free um, that you can take. So these are scholarships. So they're free right now until 2023. You can take a look at that. I'll let you screenshot that if you need to. And Again, if you have any questions, well, I'm terrible in responding to email because I'm normally like this in front of the camera or at least doing the adjustments to make sure that everything's good in front of the camera, do reach out to the Google partners who brought you here today. And that's SCORE Austin and the Northwest Texas SBDC, all right? Because they are here and available to you. All right, any questions? I'm gonna turn off the recording. <laughs>